All right, guys, my name is John Hill. I'm the Director of Alumni Career Services at Michigan State University. In a small role at the university, we provide career services to 420,000 alumni. Keeps me a little busy. Um, I am highly interruptible, so if you have questions as I'm talking, feel free. It's not going to throw me off, and I'm, I'll be more than happy to answer them as we go along. I'm going to show you some of the metrics that we're utilizing out of University Advancement and the Alumni Association to justify how we're utilizing social media and the interconnectivity that uh, comes along with that. Give you an idea of uh, why we got heavily vested into social media to begin with. Um, I came into my position four years ago. It was just prior to the, um, the recession, so I had great timing. And uh, one of the things that we realized very quickly, there were a lot of people who were in need of our services, um, and we couldn't help everybody on a one-to-one -one basis. So we had to create platforms where people could help themselves. I need a job in Chicago. I have a job in Chicago. We create the environment where that interaction happens. We get some credit for it as a university. So one of the pl first places that we went to was LinkedIn and utilize the LinkedIn groups. Uh, we now have the fifth or sixth largest college or university LinkedIn group in the world. Um, that's more than the alumni that we have uh, in comparison to other universities. So we're overachieving in that space. Um, we've migrated over to Twitter heavily, uh, also doing that kind of teach people how to fish and help themselves, uh, connect with our messaging. They're not tapping into us on a one-to-one -one basis, but we're still getting some credit for what we're doing. Um, I just walked off a call with LinkedIn prior to coming over here. It was the conversation I had just before this. Um, we are closing in on a very tight relationship with LinkedIn where we're going to beta test a lot of their products as they're rolling them out and from a career services perspective and again partly due to the fact that we utilize this resource heavily. So I'm going to show you some of the numbers. I'm not going to go through the how-to on this. I'm going to go on what we're using this for to identify who our market is and how we can connect with them. I'm actually going to go through eight sites and I'll show you some of the metrics behind it. I think I've got about four and a half hours to engage with you in. so. <laughs> We'll take a, a little bit of time, uh, but no, in reality, I can do this relatively quickly, so I'll jump in here. Um, for those of you who don't know, um, one of the great things about LinkedIn is who's on it. Uh, there are 100 million people who have a profile on LinkedIn, and uh, anybody else have six black dots as their password? I had to remember all my passwords. All right, so this will pop up and uh, showcase some areas that I'm going to go ahead and segment out information into. Um, one of the beauties of this is what information is available here. There are 100 million people who have a profile. We have about 150,000 that are related to Michigan State University. There are 400,000 CEOs that have a profile on LinkedIn. One of the reasons I talk about LinkedIn often is because I believe this is like the corporate office of social media. This is where business takes place. I categorize Twitter as the water cooler. It's a steady stream of information you're looking for right now that you want to connect with. Facebook to me is the bar. You can have some really good conversations and some really, really bad conversations in it that you don't want transparent to anybody. I can't control what my friends and family say in that space, so I'm always leery when I do a presentation live and show my stream. It is what it is. Forgive me ahead of time. So, But jumping into uh, LinkedIn, generally I'm going to go through all of these areas and show you, um, you know, how to utilize this to help you advance your career. Differently, I'm going to actually just start on the segmentation side. So I'll look at some of the numbers and information that's available here. Um, there are roughly 2 million companies that have profiles on LinkedIn. I'm going to start with the segmentation of the people and the advanced search. Um, and generally, on a career development side, we're saying, hey, what's the most imper important person to connect with? And it's going to be the CEO. So I start with CEO in a search on this. And I can see that roughly 535,000 people come up on that. Now, it's hard to see on this, but on the left-hand side, there's a default to current or past. So I'm going to take it down to the current CEOs because the past are abject failures. <laughs> and I'm going to look and see, and I'm just kidding, by the way. That's going to get me in trouble one of these days. There are 430,000 CEOs that have a profile on LinkedIn. Now, I can take it a step further. What's our major affiliation in this room? Michigan State University. So I go down to school. And I can see the nearly 2,000 CEOs who graduated from Michigan State University that have a profile on LinkedIn. Now, I can take it a step further than that, segmentation by geography. So I can come down here and do postal code 60601, which is downtown Chicago. Take this, uh, let's do it 35 miles out. And I can see the 90 CEOs who graduated from Michigan State University that have a profile on LinkedIn that live within a 35-mile radius of downtown Chicago. How quickly did I just do that? Pretty quickly, right? 
This was the bastion of Fortune 50 companies. They could afford to segment out information this way, develop the databases to do it. It's now in the hands of the individual. So everything that I'm going to show you, I haven't paid a cent for. Uh, you can replicate everything that I'm going to walk through. Uh, but take it a step further, and this is one of the beauties of LinkedIn. Um, Facebook is a connected tool, but it's very social, and it doesn't really show the amplification of your network. So if you and I connect on Facebook, we become friends, it's really the end of the relationship. Now I can go through your friends, and that gets a little creepy, but it's essentially the end of the relationship. LinkedIn is much different. So you and I haven't connected in LinkedIn yet, but you're connected to her and she's connected to him. Once you and I connect, you become a first level connection, she becomes a connection of a connection, you become a connection of a connection of a connection. That network grows very quickly and you can see how you can get from point A to point C. Add in the groups and I can, anytime I connect to a group, I can see everybody within that group. And uh, I'm gonna flip right back to this search, but I just wanna prove a point. My I have 2,600 first level connections, direct connections, that connect me to 407,000 connections of connection, that connect me with 10, point, or 10 million third level connections, connection of a connection of a connection, which uh, throw the groups in. I can see the profiles of 10.5 million people. That gets me into every vertical, every discipline, every Fortune 500 company, about 140 countries globally. For my role, important, because I can identify the decision makers who can create opportunities for MSU alumni and students. And again, any one of you can do this, create these networks. I've just put the time and effort into it. But I can quantify through numbers um, what's out there. So I'm going to go back and look at that search query I just did and the 90 CEOs here. And if you see those twos and ones that pop up here, that's telling me how I'm connected to those per people. First level connection, second level connection, connection of a connection. And I'm going to pick on somebody specifically. Craig Stout, who I just saw a couple days ago, um, Craig is uh, CEO of a, a company called Stout, Reese & Ross. Um, they uh, are a, a global company to play in financial services. Um, he's got offices in Chicago and uh, in Cleveland and D.C. and New York. Uh, any of you guys been through Southfield before, saw the big bronze buildings that are on the side of the lodge? He owns one of those buildings. He does pretty good for himself. Now you can see he's a second level connection of mine right now. Um, I actually did a presentation at Stout, Reese & Ross talking about social media on Craig's behalf. Uh, it was so effective that he's still a second level connection, so he never connected with me. <laughs> so I kind of work on that a little bit, and I've talked with him a, a few times since then. I'm like, now you can't connect with me because I use you in a presentation. So, uh, but the beauty of this is the power and how you can see the connections that take you from one person to the next. So Craig, second level connection. And if I go on the right, I can see all the people on a first level that connect me with him. Jesse Graff is one of our young alumni in Chicago. Peter Hendrick uh, works in Chicago. Um, Bruce Leach, the CEO, uh, spun out his companies in Chicago, still hanging in that area. Helen Dashney works for Broad. Uh, I can go all the way down that list and how I interconnect with them. I'm going to pick on Nate Paulson. Um, Nate worked at a company called UBS when I met him about four years ago. Uh, he um, was uh, moving up rapidly in that company. Um, he informed me, hey, John, I haven't been on campus in 15 years since I graduated. He had a 12-year-old. Uh, his 12-year-old was a big fan of Michigan State University athletics. And uh, he said he's always wanted to go to a basketball game there. I'm an alumni guy. It didn't take much for me to figure out if I get back and send him a pair of tickets for him and his son, and then I go with my son, we hang out together, he's going to have a great time. And he did. I've never asked Nate for anything since that point, but if I asked him to connect me with Craig, do you think he would do it? Absolutely. I paid into what's called social credit. And we kind of live by the 80-20 rule on that. Pay into your network 80% of the time, take out 20% of the time. It's relatively effective. The more you give, the more it comes back. But it's a way that I can start to utilize these relationships to do things like that. And I can use this system to connect in. So I can get introduced through a connection. I will click on Nate and continue. And I can send a message to Craig. Craig, I need your money. And to Nate, get me his money. Um, you guys want to be a little bit more eloquent than that when you're doing this. And if I send this out, I'll likely get fired, so I'm not going to do that. Um, but the point is, I can use this tool to mobilize my relationships to get from point A to point B. Um, when you set up your LinkedIn account, you get five introductions. As soon as I send this to uh, Nate, I go down to Ford. If he sends it to Craig, I get it back. So they're making you mobilize the relationships you actually have. Um, now, the beauty of 
this tool is that it's all database driven. So all of this information um, it has the ability to be parsed out in different ways. There are two million profiles of companies, Stout Reese and Ross, his company is in here. And as you can see, I can see information about what his company is. Not only that, I can see all the people on my network that connect with that company. I can see the college alumni that are there, Michigan State University graduates in Stout Reese and Ross. Right hand side, I can see where they're located. If I click on this little BW, it takes me to the Business Week profile page for Stout Reese and Ross, gives me hierarchical structure of the company, who the C suite is, CEO, CIO, CFO. It gives me breaking news, it gives me stock information about the company. Scroll up a little bit higher, I can see their website, breaking news, and then insights on the company. So I can start to see some metrics. I can see what type of company they are, job functions that they have, years' experience, they're a relatively new company, younger, within the last 10 years, a lot of growth. Educational degree, highly educated, but this is where it becomes effective for the university. The university attended, and you can see 14% of the people who have a profile on LinkedIn who work at Ross graduated from Michigan State University. Craig puts his money where his mouth is. He hires Spartans, and we can utilize this tool to figure out how many Spartans we have in a company and how we can mobilize them through the relationships we have to get back to the institution. Now, I just showed you one facet of that, and you could use that for business development. But you think about it, for our faculty who are trying to do research, we can showcase the connections into foundations. The Michigan State University people who work at, say, like the Kellogg Foundation. And then we can reach out to those people to talk about what we're going to try to pitch down the road to make sure that we're putting our most effective foot uh, forward. Again, mobilizing relationships to do that. And I'll go back just to show you overall what these networks look like. School, Michigan State University, and do a search. 153,000 people that uh, either currently or have attended Michigan State University that have a profile on LinkedIn. We have 420,000 alumni, so you can see we're cutting across a little bit more than a third now, and this will only continue to grow. So what we're looking at with partnership with LinkedIn is to start to integrate this data even more into our back-end systems down the road. Co-authentication is one of the things that we're going to try to do. If we nail this with LinkedIn, we can look at doing this with Facebook as well down the road. So I'm going to jump out of LinkedIn now. Um, and I can talk about LinkedIn for about four hours, literally. Um, so if you have any questions, feel free. And you can grab me at any time. I'm easily reachable. I'm on every medium known to man. So you can find me. But I'm going to jump into Facebook, and I'm going to talk a little bit about how we're utilizing this. We currently have roughly 220,000 alumni that have a profile on Facebook. And remember, this is the bar. I can't control this. So I'm going to scroll down very quickly. Nobody look. No, I'm serious. Don't. All right, if we jump in the advertising section, how many of you have played in this space before? OK. I'm going to tell you some ways that we're utilizing it. It might be a little bit different than how you were trying to utilize it uh, to connect with whatever audience you were uh, touching. Um, I'm going to create a dummy ad real quick. Let's see if Water Lilies is on here. Let's see. All right. OK, this is the least effective ad ever. But what I love about this system is that it allows you, my background is market development, uh, market research. I worked for uh, national and regional um, mediums. And so the last position I had was market development manager for Gannett, um, working at the Lansing State Journal. I love digging through data. You have 140 million people, 18 and over, who have a profile on Facebook in the US. Better yet, I can segment out based on just about any interest you can imagine. Now, we're heavy on the affiliation process. We're trying to figure out who our MSU people are. And I can use this tool to start to dig down on MSU uh, people specifically. Now, I will tell you this. One of the things that I'm doing uh, as part of the, uh, my institutional work is um, working with the Michigan Economic Development Corporation to try to re-recruit our alumni who have left um, the state of Michigan to high-paying, high-profile opportunities back in the state of Michigan for reinvestment back in the state of Michigan, entrepreneurialism back in the state of Michigan. So they give me um, some resources to do that in. We hold events outside the state of Michigan to connect people back to. So I can start with my audience, Michigan State University on here. And then I can take it a step further and I can start to break down to geography. So I can go in by city, click in Chicago, 
And I can see the roughly 10,260 people who graduated from Michigan State University who live in Chicago. I can take it a step further. Now I have an affiliation. One of the reasons we're re-recruiting our alumni who've left the state, who are in places like Silicon Valley or New York or DC, is because they know what the state's like. They step foot here. They have interest here. It's hard for us to recruit somebody from Silicon Valley who never came to the state of Michigan. All they see are the press, the perception of what this is. It's much easier to, for us to connect with the talent we already had through here. So this allows me to start to segment out the, that audience, and I could take it a step further. I have an affiliation, Michigan State University, but I'm going to put in an interest. And I can now see the roughly, and see if this pops up, the service, the number is about 820 people who have an interest in Detroit Tigers who graduated from Michigan State University who live in Chicago. What that allows myself and the MEDC to do is to set up a networking event prior to a Chicago White Sox Detroit Tigers game in Chicago where we advertise specifically through this medium who are the exact people we're interested in connecting with to try to have them come out to these events where we can pitch them coming back to the state of Michigan. So I can start to hyper-target audience. Now underneath college, um, in college, you can also put your individual colleges. So for instance, I'm a graduate of the College of Communication Arts and Sciences. I could see how many people who have associated with said they went through the College of Communication Arts and Sciences and graduated from Michigan State University, and then advertised specifically to that group with whatever actionable I want. But one way that we are, we're doing this, now I'll take it a step further. I can break down what our alumni interests are by region. So for instance, in Chicago, if I looked at what they're highly, um, what our alumni like to do often in that market, it's things that revolve around sports. If I look in Austin, Texas, and what our Spartans like to do there, I see that they're interested in music. So what we're able to do is start to develop programs on behalf of the institution that emulate what the interests are by market. So we're no longer taking that um, shotgun approach to events and programs and trying to apply that across the land. We now can be laser focused based on what they're telling us their interests are. And it allows us to read through information. <coughs> now let me get out of this and go over to Hootsuite. I know that you had just talked about Twitter and the utilization of Twitter, and you have three of the foremost experts sitting there. You know, it's kind of uh, you know, tough going behind Lee and Ethan and Cliff, who are people that I respect uh, highly. And it's also difficult to be the last speaker of the day because you guys are all about to fall asleep. But as I said, I'll try to keep this as uh, ending as possible. Um, I'm not going to go into Twitter, but I am going to show you some of the ways that we're utilizing third-party um, vendors for Twitter to uh, keep track of the content and how effective it is. This is Hootsuite. So Hootsuite allows me to, similar to what you would see in a Twitter feed, segment out things by home feed. You can see here are the mentions um, that I have of my name, uh, direct messages. You can see sent tweets. I am segmenting out information on Michigan State, MSU, Spartans, things like that, career information. Um, but what I love about this is how it affords you the opportunity to create a unique URL for the information that you want to push out. So each message be can, can become unique. This is my uh, URL right now, and it's actually longer than that. And when you have 140 characters to communicate in, this space becomes precious. Now, I just shorten that, and that becomes a unique identifier. And most of you have probably played in this space before, but this is what I really like about this. Let's see. Is the metrics attached to it? OK, so let's go for the last 14 days. OK, what this allows me to do is every time I send, send out that unique URL, Every time somebody clicks through that content, I can track that as a click. So I can see people are interested in it. Most people get it at that level. Um, it allows me to see where I'm effective communicating. And I do a presentation on personal branding, which also showcases that I'm reflecting what my personal brand is. But if I really utilize this for everything that I'm doing on behalf of my college or my unit, um, I'm able to see not only what uh, information that people are connecting to, so what they're clicking through on, but how effective that messaging is. So in university advancement, say we had a matching grant for a, a community music school in Detroit. And we wanted to see which one of the social mediums was most effective to not only generate interest in that information, click through, but also giving. 
we can create unique URLs through something like this, through Hootsuite, where we push it out through Twitter, and we push it out through Facebook, or LinkedIn, or a blog. And then as people click through on that, we're tracking how many times they're clicking through on that message, we're seeing which one of those mediums is most effective for driving action on content. And then we create unique web pages on the back end, connecting Twitter, and Facebook, and LinkedIn, and the blog, that all have the same front end. They all look the same. But we then track how many people give out of each one of those areas. We're able to see where the most effective content is by medium and which one's most effective by giving. That makes us much more powerful as a unit on utilizing this for social media. We're already tracking this offline. So we know our mailings that we do. We can tell you how many people actually communicate through that and then how many people give on that. This allows us to start doing that in social mediums. So it's just one example of how you can start to play with this. And before we wrap up, I'm going to show you very quickly how you can search both face, all Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn uh, very easily on anything that's of interest to you. But I'm going to take you to this um, site. This is called Tweet Pivot. I don't know how many of you have utilized this. I love it um, because it segments out my audience and it puts my big picture up there, which is cool. <laughs> oh, and this is not going to pop up, but it's all right because Silverlight's not on here. But I can tell you what it does. This will allow me to start to segment out my Twitter followers uh, by a whole host of ways. So I can now do it by geography. And it will automatically categorize all the people who are following me by market. So for instance, if I'm doing an event in Dallas, Texas, like I am next week, I can find the people who are following me on Twitter who live in Dallas and then send them messaging to send on my behalf for the events that we're doing down there. And Twitter's not easy to use, and it's twitter.com interface, but this allows me to start seeing it a little bit differently. This also segments out by how powerful the people are, how many followers they have, uh, how active they are in this space. So I can mobilize the best communicators to send message on behalf of the institution in this area. And I can do it by market or whatever other slice I want to do. So check this out when you get a chance. Good site. But I also like telling stories about how um, Social media is just an odd thing because you never know what kind of information you're going to be able to pull out and it kind of strikes you later at some point. How many of you have heard of Campus Tweet before? So essentially what this is is a phone book of the college and university tweeters by college or university. People sign up on their own volition, say I love Michigan State University and they pop up on the number count here. Myself and another uh, person who's in Twitter, Terry Brock, uh, got on here and uh, we were Playing around one night, we were bored, and we said, uh, you know, check out this site. This is ranking all the colleges and universities. And we realized we were third in the state of Michigan by numbers. We had about seven. Grand Valley had like 14. University of Michigan had 16. And so we're both competitive guys, and we're like, hey, let's try to be number one in the state, you know, by the end of the night. We did it in like 10 minutes. People were jumping <laughs> on, you know? So we got excited then, and we're like, well, let's see if we can take out the Big Ten. Let's see how far we can get, move up the ranks. And uh, we took out Penn State, who also got competitive and jumped on here at about the same time. We took out Penn State really quickly, moved to the number one in the Big Ten in about 12 hours. So Campus Tweet caught wind that we were doing this. And they tweeted that uh, Michigan State University is on the move. If they can become number one in the next 24 hours, we'll paint this website green and white. <laughs> we did it in 12. We became number one in this site, moved all the way up the list. They followed through. They put the Michigan State University seal. It wasn't going to pass academic approvals or you know, the, the, the usage approvals. I don't know, neither here nor there. I think they stripped it off a random site. But it still was Michigan State University, which is a good thing. But I then realized what we had here. And it was much more powerful than I would have known ahead of time had we not played around in this space. What this does is it gives you the list of the top Twitterers who are attached to the university. So starting with, and you know, click on the top. Top students and alum, Tyler Oakley's number one. Tyler is a superstar on YouTube. He's attached to the institution. He actually does things for career services for us, uh, YouTube videos. But now I've got a listing of the most effective people by number of followers within Twitter. And I can start to mobilize these people to send out messaging on the behalf of the university because they raise their hand. They have enough interest in our brand to say they wanted to attach to this space. Not only that, I can now see the latest tweets from everybody associated with the 500 people that are associated with Michigan State University on here. I can see what links are being shared 
by our body. I can see recent links, and I can see photos, and I'm always worried about showing that one. <laughs> but I can now s start to see information in here and read the pulse of what's happening around MSU. That allows us to be a little bit more proactive on messaging because we're, we're seeing what people's interests are, and then we can get involved. And we can start to tweet about some of the programs or connections or opportunities that we have with our alumni and student bases based on what their interests are. It's just a reader. It's an opportunity to read some of the information that's here. Now, how many of you have looked at your clout scores? Know what your clout scores is? This is really interesting space for people who are in career services. Because now what is happening is there are grades being attached to your social influence. This looks at your uh, Twitter account and your Facebook account. And it'll look at the amount of friends you have, connections you have. It will look at how many times you are um, liked, commented on, retweeted, at mentioned. And it affixes a score from scale from 0 to 100. I have, I think, about a 59. To give you an idea, 30 means that you have social media acumen. Uh, 50 to 70 means you're pretty strong in a particular area in social media. 70 to 90, you're a god. Uh, you have 100, you're a Justin Bieber, because he <laughs> sets the scale. So, but there are some neat things that you can do on this. And again, all of our institutional brands can be searched on this as well. One, it tells me the people who are influenced by me on Twitter. So these are my brand ambassadors. These are people who raise their hand and say, we're going to retweet you. We're going to amplify your message. And I can start to mobilize that. Um, gives me an idea of how many people. Now, I have 2,600 followers on Twitter. It tells me my unique mentioners and retweeters. Um, what I can see from this is about 23% of the people who are following me are engaged with what I do. So it tells me that I'm relatively effective in um, getting out message that people are going to amplify. It also tells me my unique likers and commenters. Now, I utilize Facebook very socially. It's friends and family. So I have a smaller group there, but they're a very engaged group, and it tells me that that's the case. I can look at a list of all the influencers that are attached to me and my brand, and again, figure out a way to uh, have them help me out. It tells me who I am based on what I'm sharing in content. So what this says here is I'm a specialist. I may not be a celebrity, but within my area of expertise, my opinion is second to none. Content is likely focused around a specific topic or industry, uh, industry with focused, highly engaged audiences. Um, I think that that's kind of a neat thing because uh, it allows, it showcases that I'm defining my personal brand in the area that I want to. And from a personal branding perspective, it also tells me what I talk about. Michigan. TED Conference, Lansing, MSU, Grand Rapids. I was, I was just a speaker at TEDx, um, so I've been tweeting and talking about that a lot here. But it's telling me that I'm pretty much on point on what I'm talking about and who I am. And let's see if I can do that. OK. One other thing I'm looking for. All right, there's a comparative tool somewhere on here. I got to play around with it. Um, but I can look at my brand and compare it to other people. So the person that I compare myself to, her name is Kelly Lux. She is the director of online engagement for the University of Syracuse. She came out of Alumni Career Services. She's probably the best in our space. Um, so I like to see kind of how I stack up with what she's doing from a content perspective, uh, from a communicative uh, standpoint. You can use this, and you're going to have to dig around in here, but you can use this to compare your accounts to other accounts. Um, where this becomes valuable is if you're competing with other programs across the country, it shows that your message is being spread and sent out to more people than their messages are for their college or university. So you can com uh, essentially claim su superiority space. Now, the problem with that, uh, with clout, is it doesn't currently allow you to connect LinkedIn to it. And again, I was sharing with you that I think LinkedIn is the corporate space. So if the one that I use the most isn't on there, it's not really an accurate re reflection of how I'm playing in that area. This one is called My Web Career. It popped up about a month ago. Um, and the beauty of this is it not only takes LinkedIn uh, in account, um, but it also uh, gives you a score based on how many times you appear in a Google search. 
So now it's starting to attach Google Analytics, your whole overall uh, look, not only in the social sphere, but how often you're mentioned online. Now, this is based on credit card scores. So it goes up to 850. I get a 755, which means I can buy a house. Um, and uh, you know, essentially, what this does is break you up into three different areas. It'll show your network and how effective your network is on outreach. It'll talk about um, your profile, and it'll talk about search results in Google, how often you come back. Now, the one point I uh, generally make to people at this point, I'm going to wrap up because I know I'm going to fall a little over. I'm supposed to end at 4.30, right? Yeah. OK. Is why do you get involved in this space? And part of it is to make sure that you're reaching as many people as you can. Every time that you do something in social media, it has the potential to be linked, categorized. It adds to the amount of search results you come up. It provides more opportunities for people to connect with what you're doing. For us, Alumni Career Services. So this is the MSU School of Packaging. If I do a search, and I talked with them the other day, they come up roughly 344,000 times as a whole. And actually, I'm going to pick on somebody else. This one I just talked to the other day. Sparrow Hospital, they come up 71,000 times. Um, Sparrow has realized that they do not have the social media presence that they want. So they're starting to really push in this space. But because they haven't, you look at it, a huge institution. They employ, I think, roughly somewhere just shy of 10,000 people. Um, integrated into a community of 450,000 people, and they only show up on a search 77,000 times, 71,000 times. This is my brand, Michigan State University, John Hill. And I'm here often. I'm pushing social media heavily. One person, 16,600 search results. And that's because I'm getting categorized in Twitter and LinkedIn and the work that we're doing in a lot of these spaces, the point I made to Sparrow is your brand needs to be integrated into social media because if you're not, you're starting to be less relevant online. So that being said, um, I am at MSUAJOHN on Twitter. Uh, LinkedIn, I'm um, linkedin.com forward slash IN forward slash MSUAJOHN, J-O-H-N. Uh, feel free to connect with me either of those places. I'm more than happy to talk with you after this or sometime down the road. Um, I love this space, so I'll be playing in it for a while. And uh, I appreciate the attention, um, and hopefully I didn't overwhelm you too much throwing all that stuff at you. But um, again, thank you. Does anyone have any questions for John before we take off? Really interesting. Um, when I look at the uh, search coming to the library website, it's also MSU Library. Mm -hmm. MSU can be Mississippi State, Montana State. Sure, 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 sure. So I'm just really curious about how do I can, uh, people may be probably Mississippi State, because they're about Mississippi State, rather than Mississippi State. Yeah. What, but if I search MSU library or libraries. Talking about Google in general? Yeah, and, and we are still on top. And I kind of also like to grab MSU libraries with any social media just, just because of that. Right. Well, and I'm, let me say, search engine optimization is not my forte. I use that more to prove a point of the, what your involvement in social media will do for your search results as they come up. Um, you know, that being said, if you have people who are optimizing your web pages, um, and then you are connecting the links that you're doing in social media back to the site, and as those get spidered, it pops into that, you'll just assure that you stay on the top of those listings. I think I'm fighting with somebody in Montana State. <laughs> I'm competitive. I'm always fighting with somebody. Yeah. So these just give me the tools to see who I'm fighting with. I'll use that too. Good. Do you have any idea or do you have any thought, I guess, to what happens when John Hill leaves MSU and how this <laughs> following essentially carries over? Yeah, and how it moves on. Well, and again, the representation that I can use in this space is myself because that's what I've developed as a brand that's part of this. Um, but uh, this applies to any of the other brands that we have at the institution. So for instance, Michigan State U, which is the university's account on Twitter, 
um, and what they're doing on Facebook uh, for Michigan State University. I think they have 180,000 uh, friends now in that space. Um, those are institutional things. Those won't change. Um, but I do think that um, you know you look at how where industry has gone. People like Scott Monty, who is the um, director of social media for Ford, he's defined himself through his brand, but in association Ford benefits because he's essentially their spokesperson in that space. Um, Scott will leave at some point. What we're seeing as a transition is um, uh, people handing off kind of the social media reins saying, hey, I'm leaving this company, but the new voice of Ford is so-and-so, and whoever's interested in just that corporate information will transfer over to that next person. They develop their own voice there. So, and I'm not saying that that's the right or wrong way. It's just one of the ways that this is developed. And we are still in the Wild West. I think everybody's pretty aware of that. Go ahead, Phil. Are you guys doing anything with location aware stuff? Like where you're, where yeah. you're at? I didn't talk about geolocation, um, but to give you an idea of where we could be going in that space, um, we're membership based, um, although we try to minimize that as much as possible because that's a transactional thing and really membership in the association should be emotional. You do it because you love the institution. Um, but if we were to take our member benefits and uh, make them uh, make an application that uh, uh, connected to geolocation, and for instance, if Big B was one of our uh, member benefits, you're walking by a Big B, you've got the application, you get pinged. Hey, by the way, just want to remind you, you're a member of the MSU Alumni Association, you get 10% off your coffee if you walk in right now. Uh, and by the way, it's your birthday, so we'll throw in an extra 15%, but we'll be able to track those. Not only that, it'll make us more effective on tracking which benefits are actually used. Um, so we can start to focus in on, on those markets and those areas. So that's one way. Throwing a tracker on Sparty is obviously something that we're going to want to do at some point. And you laugh, but he's on Twitter. He can have a voice there. He can't have a voice outside of that space. He doesn't talk. But he can talk in Twitter. So we can attach Twitter and geolocation that Sparty's going through my town right now. And I can send him a quick message on behalf of Royal Oak. Hey, we're glad you're here. So those are some things that we've thrown out there. What's your personal genesis in getting involved in social media? Say that again? What's your personal genesis in getting involved in social Why media? Why did I start doing it? Well, and again, I go back to the initial because that is the point. I started this as a way to help uh, my job from a productivity standpoint, extend our reach, be able to help as many people as possible, um, create environments where people could help themselves, and we would still get credit for it as an institution. Um, so the LinkedIn group, if we went in there, you'll see I'll have, uh, you know, yeah, it's built for people to say, I need jobs, I have jobs, how do I connect with each other? One thing we didn't get into, um, on LinkedIn on the front page, you can search status updates. So I'm often searching what it, what's being said about the institution there. Um, if you go on Facebook, if you type in advanced search into the search field, there's a beta uh, now that will allow you to search all posts that are on Facebook. And so again, I can do that by institution or corporate brand or whatever. Search.twitter.com um, is great to search Twitter either if you're interested in being in it or are not in it, you can see what's being said right now about your brand or the corporate brand or the university, things like that. How much do you follow uh, status updates on LinkedIn? I, I actually never use that and I, or I feel like a professional versus personal, it's so hard to join those in status updates in my opinion. Well, and to me it's so easy to do um, that I look at this often just to kind of get an idea of what's being said in my network. So for instance, there have been 804 uh, updates on Michigan State University, uh, and I, I can't remember how far this goes back, but I think it's seven days. Um, but again, I can run through this and get kind of an idea of what's being said in this space about us. This tends to be more professional. Twitter, I know you guys who watch Twitter often have seen everything you could imagine. I mean, the good, bad, the ugly, so. Well, it's, it just seems like um, Twitter is much more about a personal interest, well, professional, and I'm just not sure exactly for LinkedIn how it's defined its voice for status updates. Like, right. I, I hear where you're going. And um, how, um, how I'll dif differentiate LinkedIn and Twitter, uh, again, is I see this as, I call this social and professional networking, and I call Twitter social networking. And it's just a small um, designation, but to me it makes a world of difference because this is really a business tool for me. 
Um, I'm not here putting updates in to make sure that I'm connecting with friends or you know the alumni base at, as a whole. Um, we can use the groups within this to do that. Um, so that generally is the better area. And my connections here tend to be um, all professional. You know, if I, the one thing that I didn't show you on my web career, you can actually see how your networks layer in. So I can see my Facebook friends and my LinkedIn friends and how many I have of both, one or the other. And, uh, and there is a huge separation there. I have maybe 250 people that are both on Facebook and LinkedIn connected to me. You mentioned numbers, so how do you capture that? Numbers for? Like, like here you said about 400 something numbers. And you, you capture those numbers weekly? 804, no, I'll take a look at it. I do reading on this. There are, there's an, a website that we use called um, simplyhired.com. It's the one that we think is the best web or uh, career uh, module because it scrapes off jobs from public sector, private sector, nonprofit, academic websites and puts them all in one place. But they've taken it a step further and they've allowed you to socialize the job search. So they've, got, uh, they've connected to the Open Graph API through Facebook. They've got an API through LinkedIn. Um, you can see your connections for LinkedIn and Facebook to every job that's listed there. Um, that's a game changer for us because we're trying to get people to mobilize people internally to create jobs and opportunities mm -hmm. for them. And um, we're out ahead of this field right now as an institution. Um, we're the ones who are going out and talking to other colleges and universities about how to do this. But that's a great advantageous place to be for us. Um, I don't know if anybody else has this problem in this room, but I have three LinkedIn accounts. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Is there, which sort of There is not a good way. I know where you're going. Can you merge the accounts? Well, what I, I know you can't, but what I'd like to be able to do is print out um, a spreadsheet that shows who's listed rather than having to go through a laborious list and write it all myself. Is there some way to do that? Um, you actually led me into a different direction, but um, there is no easy way to do that right now. Um, you can go through um, your connections and go through the alphabet and list off each one. It's not the best approach to take. But I want to show you something that I just figured out the other day that I think is really neat. If I do a general search on this, it's going to default automatically to all the people who are in my first and second level networks. Okay, so if I take out my second level connections and my group connections, now I'm listed with only my first level connections. And then I can go into here and search by connections. And now I can see the most connected people in my network from number one all the way down. And it's just a very simple thing to do. But again, if you're mobilizing people who have large voices in this space, I now know that Dan Ryan is going to be somebody good, and he's a recruiter to help me out. What's your take on when you talk about connections and relationships? Um, when you get requests from people that want to connect with you that you find you have no affiliation, you have no connections in common, but they want to connect with you. What's your take on that? Yeah, I'm an open networker for MSU. It only makes sense for me to be. So anybody who's related to the university, I would automatically connect with. Um, and then I apply probably the same rules everybody else does. If I don't know you and I can't figure out why you're trying to connect with me, um, I will likely ignore the request. Um, and if I, ha I get a sense that you're trying to sell my network, uh, because that's part of my personal relationships, I'm not going to let you in. Uh, other than that, I think it's what your comfortability level is. Some people really want to know people and then let them into their network. Other people, you know, for me, if I gave you a business card, this is my online Rolodex. It works the same way. It's fine. So.